What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Terrifier 3, Dog Soldiers 2, Scare Movie 6, and Final Destination 6. So starting off here with Terrifier 3, shout out to you Kyle for sending this my way. Terrifier 3, as we know, killed Jonathan off screen, Sienna's brother, and Damien Leone confirmed it did happen and why he didn't want it to be on screen. He went on to talk about how it was disrespectful or how it could have been disrespectful and how it was set up to mislead us and all of that good stuff. However, during Monster Mania Con, he gave an interesting answer related to fan theories as it pertains to Jonathan. He said, my least favorite is that everybody thinks that Jason Patrick is really art, that Sienna's father, Sienna's father is Art the Clown, but I mean, that's a theory. You won't know what anything is until the saga comes to a definitive conclusion. That's a very big theory. And another one is that Jonathan is not really dead. Who thinks Jonathan is still alive? We'll see. Now it's the we'll see that has a lot of people speculating. Hmm, are we gonna backtrack on Jonathan's death? Is that why it was actually off screen? I don't take it as that. Depending on how you interpret it, I can see why. But considering he brought this up, is that the considering he brought this up in the way of saying what his least favorite theories are, I think he's just doubling down on the fact that Jonathan is dead. Yes, it happened off screen. Yes, I know some people wanted it to be on screen. I myself just wanted Jonathan to have a more substantial role to the story. So that way certain things like finding out he's dead didn't strike me the way it should have. It just didn't land the way it should have. So keeping it off screen for me didn't work because of the fact that I felt that Jonathan wasn't even used that well prior to his off screen kill. But it doesn't sound like he, that we're going to see Jonathan returning all of a sudden. The, the we'll see... I, I think that's just him teasing. It, it honestly just sounds like him teasing for the sake of it. <laughs> You've already come out and told us why Jonathan died off screen. I would hate to see him backtrack on it. I mean, if Jonathan is alive, so be it. But I think Jonathan should just stay dead. You already decided to kill him. Just stick to it. Let Jonathan be dead and let that be a part of seeing his journey going forward. She already has other things to worry about. Uh, her cousin, she needs to get back from that other dimension. So let's see what comes of this little tease he gave us. But let's talk about Dog Soldiers 2. So unfortunately, Neil Marshall put out this update about Dog Soldiers 2 on Instagram earlier this week. He says, so it's with a heavy heart that I must announce that this teaser poster is probably as close as we'll ever get to a Dog Soldier sequel. Since so many fans keep asking, I figured I couldn't keep disappointing, keep the disappointing news to myself any longer. Your unwavering loyalty deserves better. For the past six years, myself and original UK producer of Dog Soldiers, Christopher Figg, have been working tirelessly to negotiate for the rights to make a sequel with the US producer rights holders, David E. Allen and his company Dash. Years, that's as long as it took to write and make the first movie. Unfortunately, these negotiations came to a sudden and unexpected halt when earlier this year, we were due to finalize and sign the agreements and they disappeared, vanished, cut off all communication, refused to answer emails or calls. Why you ask? I don't know. I don't know why. That's the point. We simply don't know what happened or why. But the end result is that we don't have the rights to make a sequel without this deal in place, thus rendering it effectively dead. So he's saying Dog Soldier 2 essentially is no longer in the works and probably will never happen. He says, we tried, we really did, and in Chris Figg's case, spent a lot of money on legal fees doing so. We wanted this for you, for all the countless fans who've asked for it, but in the end, perhaps it's just not meant to be. The original film was lightning in a bottle, and perhaps lightning doesn't, in some cases shouldn't, strike twice. So there it is. Now here's my thing. He said he's been holding on to this news, and it has me speculating on a few things, because Neil Marshall... While Dog Soldiers 2 isn't happening, and they obviously have the rights to that IP, you don't have the rights to werewolves. N absolutely not. I think that he's trying to do a Dog Soldiers universe film with this other movie called Little Red that he's working on. There's some movie he's producing called Little Red, and of course, that's got to be a spin on Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood involves werewolves. So I think this Little Red movie that he's working on is going to in some capacity be committed or a part of the Dog Soldiers universe. I think that's how we'll see the Dog Soldiers universe return because he can't do the sequel. 
But at the end of the day, werewolves are not something they just solely own the rights to because we see werewolves all the time in movies. We have a werewolf movie coming out next month here in the States. It's actually called Werewolves. <laughs> so I think we will we will be seeing this universe again. And I think it something with this Little Red movie in some capacity will soon to be revealed as part of the Dog Soldiers universe. If not that, I just noticed that in the comment section he was teasing that we still may see the return of the universe. So fingers crossed that dog soldiers will return in some capacity one way or another. Now, let's talk about Scary Movie 6. So Fandom Spotlight uploaded this footage of Nickel City Con where Dave Sheridan talked about the new Scary Movie film during the Scary Movie panel. What stood out to me was him mentioning that the plan was to bring the original cast back and throw it back to the Ghostface stuff from the first movie. Keep in mind, during another video, I've addressed Sheridan flat out saying Ghostface is 100% back in Scary Movie 6. And that the movie is spoofing Scream 5 and 6. He also goes over the fact that it could be doing Terrifier, the Halloween trilogy, and that they're trying to get their hands on the script so they can do the I Know What You Did Last Summer legacy sequel as well. But anyway, he goes on to talk about how the Wayans coming back brought things to a halt, but there's no way the Wayans don't try to bring in the OGs like Cindy and Brenda with information like what he just disclosed in this video. He's making it a point to reference that they want to bring the OGs back. So with all the stuff coming out from Anna and Regina, this makes me even more hopeful that we will see Cindy and Brenda back because I didn't even know that was a part of the plan. The only thing I was hearing was that Dave Sheridan many months ago was having meetings related to this film. Everything he's talking about more than likely was disclosed to him during the meetings for this movie. They disclosed that they wanted to bring the OGs back, I'm assuming. They disclosed they wanted to spoof Scream 5 and 6, I'm assuming. And now that's all starting to materialize. We've seen Marlon tease it via the photo he put up to announce their comeback. So Anna and Regina's announcement Cindy and Brenda, that's something that has, has to be just worked out, negotiated, and secured so that way they can just get back into the swing of things with all of the people we want back for this film, and it can be something special just like those first two movies. I just thought it was an interesting comment that he made because he didn't say anything about bringing the OGs back during the last video I addressed. But and the last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be Final Destination 6 Bloodlines. So Final Destination 6 Bloodlines, we know it's supposed to be coming to theater sometime next year in 2025. I think it's trying to align with the anniversary of the original movie coming to IMAX and stuff like that. But unfortunately, we did lose Tony Todd, William Bloodworth, Candyman, who's also part of the Buffyverse and so many other amazing franchises. But we lost him last week. May he rest in peace. As far as I know, he was able to shoot all of his scenes. William Bloodworth will be explored in the film. Like Bloody Disgusting reported, his childhood is going to be explored, his backstory. I think most of William's scenes, of course, this won't be Todd doing this, but I think most of his scenes are going to be him as a little boy. And then Tony Todd will come in for the later years exploration of William in which we'll find out how he knows so much about death, basically having all of his secrets exposed. And I just hope it's not done in a way that is going to jeopardize the mystique of the character. But in this in this case, with the man unfortunately leaving us, I don't think I'll mind it too much. I don't think I'll mind it too much. I'll just be happy to see him one final time. And hopefully it's something of quality. I do know that there is a line in the film that's definitely going to hit a lot of people harder now that he is unfortunately no longer with us. But it's going to be a very poetic line. Final line for him to give on screen in his role of William Bloodworth. But... I do want to talk about these test screens. So there was one that recently happened and there's another one that's happening next week. I haven't heard anything about either test screening, obviously the, la the, the next one because it hasn't happened yet. But I will say this. Apparently, allegedly, the next one is supposed to have to do with the reshoots that took place. So if there's anything new and I hear about it, it's again all alleged, not confirmed. But if I hear about it, I would do my best to try to talk about it. As far as this logo that was dropped by Patrick Green, I don't know if it's official or not, but the Patrick Green account, I guess, is a, a trusted person <laughs> for people. I don't know what they've been correct about in the past. I just see so many people follow them. So if they're connected to the studio 
And if they're connected to the production and they're saying this is what the logo of the film is going to look like, then so be it. But that's really all I want to talk about when it comes to Final Destination 6. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notification and never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you want me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.